Christopher Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. And he takes that chance! It's 2024 and we are back. It's the warm-up episode 130. It's your host, Brady Frost, and Tom Bradshaw is with me once again. Tom, Happy New Year. How are you doing? Hi, Brady. It feels um, feels ages since we last podded together. I, am, I, am I right there? Apart from the little uh, transfer one. But yeah, I don't know. It's just been a long week. I haven't seen you since last year or some a joke along those lines. Yes, yes. We'll we'll leave the jokes because uh, someone who does like a good joke actually is joining us this week. He's a presenter of EFL Debate and he's an all-round EFL expert, I would say. It's Gab Sutton. Gab, how are you doing? I feel like there's a lot of pressure on now for, for to come up with one or two jokes now you've said that. So we'll, we'll see. Um, no, it's, no, it's great to have, be on the pod. I'm a big fan of, um, of your stuff. So um, yeah, happy to join you. Oh, look at us blushing. That's nice. Um, no, well, you don't have to do jokes. You can just keep buttering us up. We'll take that. Okay. Um, <laughs> Lovely stuff. Well, before we get into the game, uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to Huddersfield Town Women. They picked up their first win in the league, beating Stoke City 2 1 at the weekend. So, up the town. Um, great to see. It's been a bit of a difficult time with them with injuries and the teams are playing against and the budgets. So, um, I thought I'd give them a little deserved shout out. And we will hear from uh, Huddersfield Town Women captain Beth Stanfield, I think, in the next week, uh, giving us a little update on the games. So, good to hear. Now, let's concentrate on the men, shall we? Because Huddersfield Town, uh, they host Plymouth Argyle. In the first home game for a town in 2024, uh, they come Plymouth. They come to West Yorkshire, having won just once in the last six, uh, excluding the cup, and failing to win in any of the last ten away matches. This will be the first two time, first time these two teams have locked horns since August, uh, when Plymouth beat Neil Warnock side three one. Uh, and interestingly, in the opposition dugout is a new man, Ian Foster. He'll be his first championship game at his new club, having been appointed as Stephen Schumacher's successor on Friday afternoon. Uh, Gab, what? Can you tell us about the new man for Plymouth? I, I know he's got a bit of a pedigree, but um, what's kind of been the reaction to that? Yeah, it'll be interesting seeing Foster's at the um, at the John Smith Stadium, won't it? Um, uh, I um, <laughs> I think he's someone who's got quite a good coaching background uh, with uh, the England setup, um, and then uh, more recently he's been um, away in uh, in Saudi Arabia. But he's clearly a very good coach. Um, now, you never quite know how that's going to translate to being a number one in senior football. Obviously, a very different environment. Um, at the same time, I think a club like Plymouth Argyle is probably quite a good um, sort of um, starting point for him because what Argyle do is they've got very good people sort of behind the scenes upstairs and their structure's really good. So I think if you're a first-time manager, uh, you know, with your background more in youth football and coaching, that's probably the kind of job that um, that you want to be going into because uh, it kind of frees you up to focus on what you do best at that. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a bit of a transitional time for, for our gal, isn't it? They've just lost Stephen Schumacher. Um, and obviously Huddersfield will feel like they want to try and capitalise on that. We certainly do. I mean, Tom, we were talking about this before, thinking it's a must-win game for town. Does that worry you, given the new man in the dugout, new manager bounce, all that stuff? Yeah, there's a few factors there that just... Uh, playing that kind of voodoo in my head. There's um, the new manager bounce and the fact that they haven't won away yet this season in the league, which um, instantly makes me think that Saturday will be their first away win of the season, Brady. So I don't know. It's, um, yeah, it's, that's just yeah town fan mentality at the moment, I think. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, you know, things are picking up, making signs. I mean, Gab, um, Tom touched on that there about Plymouth's away form. They are very chalk and cheese when it comes to the home form and away form. Yeah. Um, I know there is going to be a new man in the dugout, so it's always a bit of a, you know, hard one to say. But do you can you see Huddersfield getting something from this, given that they are so poor away from home? I think this is a massive game for, for Huddersfield, to be honest, because you faced uh, Middlesbrough, who I think are probably a little bit of a different level to you in terms of what they've got in terms of individual quality, and then Leicester, who have, you know, <laughs> planets apart. Um, but um, I, so, but 
having said that, I think that having lost both those games, it's, it is important that you try and um, target the victories. And also, um, I feel like with the with Sheffield Wednesday um, resurging, um, you probably do need to look at teams immediately above you to try and reel in. And I think it's a bit of a difficult one because Plymouth Argyle, as I mentioned earlier, are such a well-run club. My team, Birmingham, have just appointed Tony Mowbray, which I hope is going to sort of solidify us. Stoke have now got Stephen Schumacher and um, I don't think they've lost since he, he came in. Um, so it's a little bit difficult to sort of identify maybe a potential plummeter. Um, Argyle probably were, are one of the teams that you'd probably put in that category. So, um, yeah, I think if you could beat them, that'd be a double or a double whammy even, wouldn't it? Mm, certainly. And, and Tom, I know you were saying being, you know, town fans, we love to think the world is against us and everything's going to go blow up in our faces. But you look at this game, you know, and you look at their record as you touched on, it's, it is a good chance. Like, be positive, Tom. Come on, I'm letting you be positive. <laughs> yeah, I think I think um, Darren Moore and and his team have got to be targeting this as three points. I think, um, regardless of the the kind of new manager coming in, um, if you can't win, if you if you haven't won a way um, in the whole season yet, there's going to start to be a mentality in that squad where they just will think. Oh, we can't win away as soon as say if town score first, surely it's gonna set in the fans their fans will probably just think it as well. And so it's one of those where potentially a lot of things um work in our favour, do you know, if uh, little things happen like that. So yeah, I, I I mean, maybe I'm not as positive as I could be, Brady, but I think definitely from <laughs> Darren Moore's point of view, we should be definitely thinking, come on, we get three points here and uh, like Gab says, kind of claw back at a couple of those teams who were just a, a few points above us. It's hoping. Oh, sorry, guys, you, well, I was just wondering, guys, do you feel like um, can, the, the sort of the ambition, that the, the sort of noises of ambition that the club have suggested, particularly from Kevin Nagel in terms of we're not done yet with signings. You've brought in Alex Matos from Chelsea, who's really um, highly rated. You've... Um, Sign the Serbian striker who's got a good record of thinking fin- scan- somewhere in Scandinavia whose name escapes me. Um, but um, and I'm sure there's going to be more to come, which I imagine kind of combined with some of the improved performances, including that win over Blackburn. Is there a bit of encouragement or a bit of a lift perhaps from the last few weeks? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll jump in, Tom. Uh, but yeah, like I and then you can go, obviously, everything I have to go first. Um, no, I um. I'm kind of encouraged. I think it's been a good start to the window. I think it's it's good to hear that we're we're not done because I don't I don't think we we would course, be done, you know, yeah. um, at all. I think there's quite a lot of surgery that maybe needs in the squad. It's obviously hard to do it in in, uh, in January, but I think Matos is an impressive sign, and I think you know we've seen in the past that we've had you know Emil Smith Rowe, Trevor Shalaber, you know, mm-hmm. Levi Colwell. Hopefully, he's you know he's one of them. Um, and we do have quite a good relationship with Chelsea. So from the noises we've heard, and we've done a podcast with um, Chelsea Loan, the kind of Loan Academy, they seem to think quite highly of him. So, um, yeah, it's positive. We definitely need a striker. Bojan Radulovic, who's, who's come in today, uh, sorry, Friday, he looked, we saw him briefly against Man City, but it's so hard to judge in that game. But he, he did get a good shot off, maybe, you know, um, did quite well to spin his man, I thought. So, yeah. Yeah, it's positive. I think it's just well, we'll kind of come on to it because obviously it's transfer season. But I'm I'm impressed. I mean, they kind of I don't know what you think, Tom, but they kind of put themselves into a bit of corner where this is all they really could do. So it's good that they are kind of you know a man of action. Uh, Kevin Nagel is now. I'm quite encouraged, and hopefully we're here kind of the end of the window, and the squad's a lot better, really. Yeah, I think um, you can't really. I mean, there was a there was a lot of questions, Gab. I'd say like the, um, maybe town fans used used the phrase um, less talking, more action. And I think um, especially if we get in a couple more bodies, you can't fault Nagel for kind of putting in the funds for that kind of thing for the the squad. And I think quite a few people were worried that that wouldn't happen. Um, and really, I think if that happens, if if we do get a couple more in, because I still think it's a couple more, but if mm. that does happen, then it's then down to 
Darren Moore and the uh, the recruitment side of things who who have, will have potentially failed us this season if we don't stay up, I think, to be honest. There you go. Um, was that was that comprehensive enough for Gab? For you, Gab? <laughs> yeah, no, it's really interesting. Um, I, I feel like um, the um, I've, I read quite a bit of Stephen Chicken's um, articles on uh, on Substack, and uh, it, I it, it's interesting that um, he actually got a bit of criticism, I think, for playing three five two when maybe the likes of Sorba Thomas and Josh Karoma, you'd say, don't necessarily fit into that formation um, sort of organically. Um, but um, he sort of made a few tweaks within the 3-5-2 recently. And I think one of the things Stephen mentioned was um, out of possession, I think I'm right in saying it's um, a bit of a back four because you've got... Um, uh, David Kasumi sort of shifting into right back and then Jaheim Headley, who I think is now injured. Uh, so presumably it would be Ben Jackson pushing into the left side of midfield um, and then some someone else sort of shifting over to the right. So um, it's interesting how he's kind of been able to rebalance these in te- these things in terms of the out possession shape. And hopefully you can take that forward into the second half of the season. Yeah, definitely. He's hoping. I mean, you talk about kind of the defensive players. Though. Something I wanted to ask you was, um, in Plymouth's last league game, it was obviously a free all draw against Watford. Morgan Whitaker scored in that one. That's his 13th league goal this season. He's certainly one to watch out for on Saturday. Mm. Um, I just wanted to gab for people who don't really know, because obviously he, he was with Plymouth uh, last season on loan and recalled by Swansea, but he's been in red hot form. And what kind of striker can town fans expect on Saturday? And what's made him like have this incredible run? Yeah, he's um, he's a really quick um, left-footed striker. Uh, he's quite a versatile forward as well, and he's um, he's really agile as well. He's quite good at sort of turning an opponent quickly and sort of spinning and getting a snapshot away. So he can be a bit um, a bit silent but deadly, if you like, sometimes. Um, so yeah, I think he's going to be a real, a real threat for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, Tom, I don't want to big up Plymouth too much, but um, you spoke to uh, one of the guys from the Plymouth podcast, didn't you? Yeah, um, I did have a chat with uh, the uh, Argyle podcast. I've just forgot their name. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, there's the Green and White podcast from Argyle. Really right? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's Aaron. But it might not be Aaron because this is going to be in the future. Aaron is ill. So hopefully it's him. It might not be. Here it is. Hi, this is Ben from the Green and White podcast answering some questions about Plymouth Argyle before I'm away game at the John Smith Stadium. Um, firstly, how has the season gone since we last met? Well, that's the entire season, really, um, since we met on the first day. Um, how has it gone? It's been a real up and down kind of season with loads of incident, loads of drama in it. Um, we're doing OK in terms of our league position, but there's been some uh, defensive frailties throughout the season and we haven't managed an away win all season. So uh, although we are we're we're sitting comfortably in the table at the moment as comfortably as you can be I think for a team with our budget that's been uh, promoted last season there are things to worry about and of course we've just recently had our manager poached by Stoke and uh, some of our best players that were with us on loan go back to their parent clubs and then move on to other clubs in the championship strengthening them and weakening us so uh, on the whole it's a bit of a you know, a half it depends if your glass is half empty or half full. How good the season's been, but I think most Argyle fans would have taken being in the position we are now at the start of the season. Um, and in line with that second question, where do you now hope to finish the season? At the start of the season, I personally predicted us to finish seventeenth. Uh, we're currently eighteenth, so we're around where. I was expecting us to be, but I think the vast majority of fans would take 21st at the start of the season and probably the same now. Um, survival is the key for for us this season and anything that uh, any better than, than 21st will be a bonus. That's not to say that we can't finish higher. We've got some uh, some opportunity now to recruit some some exciting talent with the new manager that's come in having links to a lot of the England setup having worked with a lot of exciting young players so there's potential to 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 progress in the second half of the season but of course with a new manager and losing a couple of key players especially Finazaz being the the big one 
Uh, there's also the potential for things to go backwards. And as as you're aware, it's a, a dogfight at the bottom. So um, if if we were offered 18th or even 21st, I think that most fans would accept that uh, right now. What are we looking for in the January window? Um, well, we've the first need, which is a defensive, a big defender, centre back, a defensive strengthening, has happened um, already. We've got a uh, loney in from Tottenham to uh, to fill the the right hand side of the the centre back pairing. Hopefully, um, he will will hit the ground running and provide a bit more solidity, especially aerially, where it is where we we struggle at times. Uh, but obviously we've we've also lost recently two midfielders, so we need to strengthen in that area of the pitch, if nothing else, for depth in the squad. But we certainly could do with another creative midfielder uh, in the mould of Finn Azaz to replace him. So whether that uh, is possible, I don't know. It's certainly not a player you can go out and get a like-for-like -like, um, player for, for, for Argyle to go out and get a like-for-like -like player with our budget. But... Um, it might be that we can find someone we can develop if they can develop quickly, but more likely will be that we bring in a few players and try to then replace Azaz's output by committee. Uh, and maybe with the new manager as well, wanting to change the way the team plays, that might be a natural sort of development in the team. But we definitely need at least two or three bodies in the midfield. We could probably do with another central defender. And honestly, as the, the manager himself and the, the coaches have said, the coaches the team we could really do with strengthening everywhere on the pitch and if someone's identified and available that fits the bill to strengthen any area of the pitch um, then then we'll look to to sign them and um, really you know different fans will suggest we could do a strengthening in in all areas of the pitch from fullback centre back midfield um, and attack although we do have uh, a striker with a decent return this season in, in Ryan Hardy and of course our the, the crown jewel now that Finn Azaz has gone, especially uh, Morgan Whitaker on the right. Which players should we look out for on Saturday? Well, especially now with Finn Azaz going to Middlesbrough, um, the only real standout is Morgan Whitaker. but then you guys probably more than aware of him and the progress he's made this season already. Um, he really is our, um, our biggest threat, not only in terms of his production, but in terms of raw ability. He has the ability to flit in and out of games and, and, and create moments of magic and, and influence a game um, in, in, in spurts and just uh, never seems to be phased by whoever he's playing playing against um, and can, he seems to produce something every game he plays. So he's definitely the danger man. What's my prediction for the game? Um, on our preview pod, I said 3-2 to us, um, which is more... More hope than expectation, to be honest. We need to get this first away win and it seems no better time than our first first match, first league match under the new manager. However, you know, we, we can't seem to keep a clean sheet um, and we, we've lost our main creative force in midfield. So um, us producing the high scoring football that we sometimes do might be a struggle, especially away from home. We're not half as productive as we are at home, so I would absolutely snap your hand off for a draw. I don't know whether uh, that will come about, but obviously if you if you win this game, you're within a point of us and all of a sudden um, there's a big difference, isn't there, between being on... Uh, there's a big difference between being 17th or 18th and seven points clear and being seven points clear and 21st. Having the extra teams between you is is a big deal so uh, with with Stoke just below us on goal difference and Birmingham just a point below us if you were to beat us then of course the very best we could we could be the position we could be in would be to be one point above all the teams below us and then uh, hope that the the bottom three uh, don't pick up results so it's a really big game for both teams I'm sure that um, you're hoping for a win being the home fixture I would absolutely take a point but I've, my prediction is 3-2, and I'm going to have to stick with that. Come on, you greens. And there we go. Thank you, Aaron, or potentially someone else from the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> they were very insightful, whoever it was. Uh, Tom's already played the mind game for this. Like, oh, yeah, what podcast was it? Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. We, uh, I don't know, really you are, I don't know what podcast you're from, but you, you're great. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I'll get Tom out of a sticky spot here because uh, let's move on to Kwana's question. So we've kind of touched on it in chats, really, but um, ahead of the previous show, it's transfer season. Oh, it's January transfers. Um, so the question we asked was related to that. It was, what do you think are the priority positions for January? I'm going to read out the listener responses and then I'll ask you two chaps as well. So we'll have, kick it off with Will Harris. He says, another forward, a centre-back who can play out, a right wing-back, assuming Spencer isn't going to be first choice. Well, interesting. They're not sure if Matos will be the ball-playing centre-mid we desperately need. If not, that's a must. Yeah, don't disagree. Marcus Burley says, for me, a winger with Bergsorg seemingly out for a while could really do with a spark for the team. Someone who can change the game, which we have sorely lacked. Although, depending on injuries, we could do with a left-sided centre-back, particularly with the absence of Nakayama. And finally, Johnny Foster says, got to be another forward for me. We're one injury back uh, from being back to square one, which doesn't help anyone. We've just got to have someone who can be a bit different to what we have and what we've already brought in. Whoever we bring in, though, has to have paces with two slow all over. So... Uh, People are kind of listing a lot of the same positions, really, Tom. Um, where do you stand on what town need now? Obviously, we've got that striker, got a midfielder in. What do you, what does Tom Bradshaw want in the uh, the war the war chest that Kevin Nagel is going to supply in the in the shopping cart? Let's how many metaphors can you know little cliches can I get in? There? Yeah, um, um, it's two it's two or three for me, Brady. I think um, priority now, unfortunately, is another defender. I think someone who maybe is quite versatile to come in. Um, it's it's a sh it's a shame that we've picked up the few injuries there, and then Nakayama um, going off on international duty as well. It's like um, kind of thrown a bit of a spanner in the works, hasn't it, at the back? Um, so uh, someone a bit versatile to go in there. I don't have any names to be honest. Um, and then. I, midfield starting to look okay, so potentially. I, I mean, def, I think another striker in the sense, yeah, because if if um, I can't even remember his new striker's name. I'm having a mare tonight. Aren't I? Is it, was it Radilovic? Yeah, yeah. Rad, Radders, Radders. If Radders get. <laughs> If Call Radders gets, in, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, big man Burjan. That's a good one. But yeah. it's like if he if he picked up an injury, then yeah, you are great comment. You get you back to square one, aren't you? And you you kind of hoping for Danny Ward to stay fit. Yeah. Look, I know a lot of people are, are against it, but I would not be against Jordan Rhodes coming back in the fold. To be honest, yeah. just as that backup striker for the rest well, of the season. Well, can I sort of offer a sort of outside perspective on this? Because um, mm -hmm. I would say that if uh, Huddersfield don't sign a quick, um, you know, rapid uh, centre forward, I think that it's really important that you can sustain a high press because if you if you operate um, quite deep, which you seem to a little bit at times uh, in in recent games, you've got to have that outlet because otherwise uh, Radders, as we'll call it, Radinovic, um is going to get isolated. Because I know that although he's a good all round centre forward, from what people have said, um, he, he's not particularly quick. Um, so what I would say is um, have a midfield that can be aggressive against mm. the ball for as long as possible within games so that you're not then asking, you don't risk that Radulovic getting isolated. So for me, um, I feel like this is a bit of a touchy subject with Huddersfield Town fans. I don't particularly um, rate Jonathan Hogg at this stage of his career. Fantastic professional, great battling qualities, good leadership, all the rest of it. Um, but I think that that's sort of outweighed by his lack of mobility. And in order to make Jonathan Hogg work in midfield, you've got to operate deeper sometimes because you can't sustain the high press. So for me, I would say Rodoni, um, who's the um, XMK Dons, Kasumu and Matos in midfield. I would actually go that way so that you're stealing the ball high up and then it doesn't matter as much that you don't have a forward that's necessarily super quick. Do you know what, though? There was a point, Gab, where, and I, it, was it on, I think it was under Carlos, where, especially that first season, where Hogg pretty much ended up playing at centre-back most of the games, didn't he? It was, was it Carlos where he dropped back quite a lot? So, I mean, there's yeah, a potential... Centre back wasn't he? Like when we yeah yeah go deep. there there is a potential that um yeah if you do want to get that the, the high press on that um you could be cheeky and say that your your defensive um, worries could be 
fixed by dropping. But then you're Jonathan not playing Hogg. with a back three, then Tom. Are you? you can't you can't have Jonathan Hogg playing a bit of a centre back and three centre backs, can you? Oh no, 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 no. But I mean, like if it dep- if if so, if Pearson is out for a whatever X amount, I've been very yeah. disappointed with Tom Tom Lee's this season. I don't really. Yeah, really. It just seems a bit seems off the pace, and I know he is also pushing on now as a bit of a veteran of the championship, but um, he just doesn't seem like the same Tom Lee's that we've had in the, the last couple of seasons. Whereas mm-hmm. I know that it, it, like you said, you do touch on like Hogg being very divisive amongst the town fans, I'd say, Brady, but um, you know that Jonathan Hogg is going to come on and give his all 100%, and you're going to mm-hmm. be able to see it with your eyes do you know what i mean it's going to be I, I at least do, trying to get tom, those balls early i mean that I, I i do get that side of it tom i would say i definitely think jonathan Og can play a part in helping huddersfield stay up this season but i would say not necessarily bombard him with games because i think if you bring in yeah. jonathan hogg fresh he'll have the odd bet blinder of a game or if you bring him off the bench sometimes he's going to solidify things but I, I reckon to make him a main, keep him as a mainstay. I, I feel Darren Moore probably will do that because he seems to like Jonathan Hogg. But I would say that might mm. be a mistake. Mm. Yeah, it's tricky. I, I think um, obviously I love Hoggy, nothing against him, but yes. um, it's kind of. Uh, I think maybe if Town had more of the house in order, it wouldn't we wouldn't have to be as crucial as he needs to be. It'd still yeah. probably be in the team. Um, I think that's you know still does a good job and I think you know he, he always surprises me I have to say like we've had so many managers and he, he comes in and is integral in quite a few teams but I do kind of feel if you town had made that sign I mean Tom we talked about Alan Campbell from Luton who we liked when we were maybe going off in the playoff final no chance yeah. Alan Campbell, like, yeah you know probably may have replaced him but anyway Gab I want to ask you because we were talking about um People normally ask us, like, you know, play a position for me. I think that left-sided centre-back we touched on. Yeah. Probably thinking of a winger. Um, people always ask us names. We have no idea, let's be honest. But <laughs> you do. <laughs> so I've kind of put you on the spot here. But we were talking about some players before we were recording. Is there anyone you think might be worth the town uh, to have a look at? So I'm a massive fan of Carl Pejani at Stevenage. Um, I've been sort of covering and writing about the EFL for the last um, sort of 10 years now. And in League Two, I've never seen a better season from a League Two centre-back than Carl Pejani last season at Stevenage. Um, they, they actually won promotion that year and they're now actually going going really well in League One. I think they've kept the joint most clean cheats as well. And basically, Carl Pejani's kept the same. He's very, um, very humble lad, not someone, you know, so he'd fit into the cultural sort of ethos that Darren Moore wants to create. He's someone who, you know, will go to the gym before training. He's got quite a relentless mentality, um, you know, fantastic person to, to bring into a football club. Um, and he's absolutely amazing in the air, despite being relatively short at, um, I think he's six foot one. Um, now he's 31 and he's not great on the ball. And both those things, um, he's okay on the ball. He's just not yeah, not brilliant. Um, and both those things, I think, mean that probably most championship clubs aren't going to be looking at him because, uh, because you know, nurturing high potential assets is quite a big thing. Um, however, I think in Huddersfield's situation, I, I actually wouldn't be too worried about age and ball playing ability, first of all, because I'm not expecting Huddersfield to have loads of the ball in the second half of the season. I don't think that's going to be the game plan. And secondly, from the age point of view, although 31 looks old on paper, he spent most of his career or a lot of his career in non-league football where the training methods aren't necessarily as rigorous. So actually, I think he's got a lot in the tank. And when you look at him play, um, he doesn't look like he's anywhere close to sort of a downward curve. So I think for a sort of an 18-month contract to help Huddersfield stabilise in the championship for a couple of years, I think he could really do a job. Um, and I think that he's more affordable in terms of your budget than someone like, say, Iron Cashin at Derby, who is a big potential asset, um, but that it would take, I don't know, £6 million, you know, quite quite a lot of money to prize him away from Derby. Whereas for Carl Pejani, um, it might be seven figures. It might be it might be a bit less than that because he's um, because of his age. So for me, Carpe Shani mm. would be the pick um, if you want a centre back that's got a really strong mentality, that's great in the air, um, still pre mobile, um, and has a really good long throw from the sort of defensive areas as well. So yeah, Carpe Shani would be my pick. 
That's a really good shout. And um, I suppose we still we have that strike, but we, we were talking about the need for another. I think, um, you know, that's something teams are... The fans are certainly uh, keen to have. Is there anyone from the lower leagues you you would recommend or someone we, a, a potential gem we could plug? Um, yeah, there's Ali Al Hamadi at um, AFC Wimbledon. He's kind of one of the two uh, top strikers in League Two. There's also Macaulay Langstaff at Notts County, however, um, and they've both got similar goals returned so far this season. Um, what you get with Al Hamadi is he's very quick and he's very strong and he's 21 rather than 26, um, which means that A, um, well, first of all, in terms of the athleticism, that means that even if he doesn't, he takes a while to step up technically and tactically, he can still be a handful in the say, in the way that um, maybe Macaulay Langstaff might not be if he's not scoring the goals. Um, and also at 21, you are investing in a potential asset. Um, I would imagine it would take a couple of million in terms of flat fee to take Al Hamdi away, plus you know, maybe a performance-related add-on and possibly a, um, a sell-on clause. Because um, Wimbledon have just had to pay you know, a few years ago for a new player lane, which was a £32 million project, which they're still paying off. So yeah, they might be open to cashing in on Alhamdi, even if it sort of destabilises their playoff push in League Two. So, um, yeah, Ali Alhamdi, I think. Nice. And uh, as I said to you before, record, I'm doing an AFC Wimbledon save on Football Manager, so I purely back that because, um, as we all know, if I'm good on Football Manager with a certain player, it means they'll be brilliant in real life. <laughs> I anyway. think, Freddie, if if Town are going to spend, if Town are going to spend money, and um, Gab, I do like the kind of the. The, the sound the sensibleness of the stevenage lad the, the that mm. that um kind of the shout out there but also it's kind of like i think town of now you, we mentioned john and jonathan hogg we mentioned tom lee's town of are kind of getting to a stage where there's quite a few aging players and um i'm not that confident in some of the what you call academy lads coming through that they could mm. step up so it's like Town might have to actually get the checkbook out and maybe push the boat out for that that kind of someone like that lad from Derby. Do you know what I mean? And um, I mean the guy from Wimbledon sounds great because I think one thing we do lack up front is pace. Just someone who you can maybe chip it over the top to, and they're, they're gonna just beat beat um beat that defend for pace. So yeah, it's um it's a very interesting time at Town in it, and I think um. Maybe not in January because obviously things get inflated. But yeah, the the summer especially coming up is going to be um, mm. very interesting to see what comes in. Mm. It really is, and, and Gab, like you say, took them those kind of uh, that prospect, and um, obviously the Stevenage defender. I, I think you're right. Like Huddersfield, they need to. To be honest, we've said it for ages, haven't we, Tom? But they do need to do some surgery to that squad, and it's not going to happen overnight. So, not that you want players to be potential stop gaps, but like you say, that kind of eighteen month mm. project to get them into a better place. So I think I think you're spot on there, Gav. That's the type of signings yeah. town should be looking at. Really, it's a tough one. It's a tough balancing act, isn't it? Because you're partly thinking about what's going to keep us in the championship, but you're also yeah. thinking about how can we start to build a squad that can grow within grow within this league as well. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think that was some good, some good chat there, chaps. Um, we'll go to a break, but before we do, if you're going to the game on Saturday, obviously go to the Magic Rock Bar if you're in the Kilner Bank stand or whatever it's called now, I forget. Uh, but if you're not in that stand and you're not going to Magic Rock before the game and you can't wait to have a beer, um, don't forget you can get 10% off any online orders that you do at magicrockbrewing.com using the code AHTTC10. Um, yeah, you can use that. They also have uh, alcohol-free options if you're doing dry jam as well, so make sure to check them out. Uh, enough for every option there. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will talk more about Huddersfield Town. Excellent stuff. So, um, Tom and, and Gab, obviously you touched on um, the Kevin Nagel stuff. I think it's probably a good time to chat here. We normally do a poll at this point, but I just kind of wanted to get your your thoughts on it. Tom, I'll come to you first, being the town fan here. Um, what have you kind of made of, of Kevin Nagel's statements before the window and, and what we've seen so far? Are you impressed with what you've seen? Yeah, I think so, Brady. I mean, kind of already touched... I, I, mean, I think I've 
I've said it quite a lot on this podcast, maybe sounding a bit like a broken record, maybe. But um, I think he, he is delivering on what he's saying. And um, I did say the kind of this January transfer window might be the the moment that hopefully wins over those fans that were doubting it a bit more. But um, I think he is kind of putting his money where his mouth is, as as the saying goes. But um I love it. I love the enthusiasm. I love kind of the little videos that he's done on social media over these last couple of days coming coming over. And um, it's just something very different at town, isn't it? Um, and I, I think um, we've mentioned it before. He's kind of taken over something. Um, and when it started going, when it's been going bad this season, he's been getting the brunt of it. But really, it's been a build-up of terrible management of the club for for a few years now. Um, but I I just think you've got someone who um, seems excited and enthusiastic, and that's kind of all you can ask for at this stage of uh, of someone who's just taken over your club. Can I ask you guys uh, a question, or you, Tom? Um, in terms of um... What I loved about Huddersfield under uh, Dean Hoyle was it felt like he was very uh, connected with the values of the town because he, you know, he is from Huddersfield and um, yeah, things like I remember under David Wagner the sort of the policy on season ticket prices. There was a very um, there was just something really refreshing about it and it seemed to bring a sort of different energy to Huddersfield that maybe you don't get sometimes in other parts of the country. Um, and it felt a little bit from afar like um, Huddersfield went away from that under Phil Hodgkinson and um, you actually had. Um, Dean Hoyle um, sort of coming back when he was probably um, not necessarily wanting to, perhaps. Um, do you think that Kevin Nagel can um, sort of uh, embrace some of the values of the club that um, I suppose Dean Hoyle imposed or, or sort of continued? Um, I'll, I'll do a little bit, Brady, and then do you want to say something on this? Because I think, I, think, I think one thing and was evident from um, kind of saturday as well was um town fans love a <laughs> love to know that they're kind of getting a bargain or getting the money's worth i mean i was quite surprised that we sold out six thousand odd tickets for saturday but um they were were they 20 quid brady i think for adults which is a very reasonable price to be going to watch huddersfield town play the world champions albeit knowing that they're probably going to lose five or six nil um but i, I think the one thing um that yeah, that he's he he has to do for me is keep that kind of affordable football thing going on mm. because um, there's no worse than when that stadium is like half empty. Um, I, I remember like I mean I, I don't yeah the it was Ken Davy days really when when it was before kind of Dean all came in when it was you you didn't really feel like the money was worth it especially in league one so you don't want to see it going back to that at all um it's better to have gab like i mean you touched on it it's better to have town fans in that stadium than it is to kind of have half and be potentially making a few grand more do you know what i mean yeah and also, yeah. don't tell me that the atmosphere doesn't make a difference when fans feel like their club gets them. Like, I've seen, yeah, exactly. um, you know, the, the stadium absolutely rocking when fans really buy into everything. So, um, I, th I think you spot on. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I think I think the difficulty you're going to have is, and it'll be interesting to see, see with this window, really, and plans going forward. But um, I think the kind of problem with town, I'd say maybe even when Neil Warnock's first kind of days, like that Norwich game, Tom, I think it was a midweek and wasn't there like 8,000 there or something like that. Yeah. You've got to kind of give people a reason to come as well. And I think we've seen a lot of, you know, a lot of poor teams over the past years and that relegation struggles. And, you know, I think they are going to have to kind of invest in the squad now. That, like I agree with you, Tom. I think he's, he's brought in a lot of good stuff. You know, I, I know you can be like, mm, is it that, you know, what has he changed? But I mean, like, even the mural of Jonathan Hogg, I think that's a lovely touch. You know, um, the kind of stuff he's doing to the match day experience, this is all kind of quick wins, but it's good to see that stuff. And mm. I do think, it, again, at the end of the day, we've talked about this a lot, Tom, it comes down to the what you see on the pitch. And 
my concern is I wonder, because you're right, like, you know, my season ticket's, what, 300 quid. It's one of the cheapest in the championship. It's brilliant. But I do think there'll come a point where if they are going to invest into the team and they talked about Premier League, I wonder if you're going to reach that point where eventually, like, it's going to be a bit of a bit of a battle and you know it'd be interesting to see but i think mm. completely agree with you gab like when that stadium's full i mean we've got complimented a lot on it in the premier league but when that stadium's full and it's rocking um mm. as much of a cliche is it really is a 12th man especially for for a team like huddersfield that is normally battling against giants mm. i i mean you'd hope that um the external investment um sort of means that they are able to um just kind of um give fans affordable uh, affordable tickets because I, I feel like the pros of that really out, outweigh the cons um that'd be my perspective on it hmm. yeah it's, really this, Sorry, it's these um i think the plan from what they're saying it's getting these kind of external revenue streams as well isn't it so it's the i think one massive thing and i know huddersfield is is I mean a lot of towns in this country going through a tough time economically and stuff, but um, yeah. I think if if Huddersfield Town own that stadium, if Kevin Nagel can get that over the line, that is gonna potentially could open up so much for the club and and uh, really help it out. Mm. I agree. I completely agree. Um, well, Tom, we can talk about you know in the in the bigger picture stuff. We will come back to the the Plymouth game. Um, Tom, what, I suppose, like, what do you think would be best for town to do? Would you start the the two new lads? You know, they might not be fully fit. Is there anything you're going to do to to change this one? Um, Matos was great, wasn't he? I think against City, I think um, he looked really good and energetic. I'm glad he got took off, though, because that would have been a uh, classic, wasn't he? Debut and he gets a, a red card because, I mean, he was flying in, wasn't he, with, with uh, a couple of those challenges. Um, Radders... Honestly, I think we have potentially got... I know we only saw him for, what, 15, 20 minutes, but it was against Manchester City and his touch and turn and kind of sharpness to get a ball off his release was so good. Um, and that chance he created, Brady, he's he's done... I don't know who was centre-back for City, but he's done him like a kipper, and, he, and um, the keeper's made a great save. Um, pretty much one-on-one. -on -one. Shame that didn't go in, innit? Because that would have been a, a, an amazing start to his uh, career at Huddersfield. But, um, yeah, I, I I would potentially start them both, I think, um, with uh, Radders. Um, it's going to be, I think, if it's going to be on a fitness side of things, isn't it? Um, and then I was really impressed with Spencer as well, especially that first half against mm. um, Jack Grealish. He... I can't really remember Jack Grealish getting the better of him. Um, mm. And he, he, I know Jack Grealish won a lot of corner against him, but Jack Grealish, I don't remember Jack Grealish getting the ball past him to get across into the box, which is so impressive for a lad his age coming back for his first game back at town since being on loan. Um, and I, I know people took the mick out of town posting a highlights video um, of our own player as if we've signed a new player. but It is a bit like it, a new signing though, isn't it, Tom? Like, <laughs> honestly, he's done so well at Motherwell, like it feels he's like. Done, that's the thing, Gab. I mean, I, I've only seen, I think I've seen one game on Sky with Motherwell were in and he, he played really well. So, But it was really nice to see those highlights of what he actually, how he had been performing. Motherwell fans were good. Like, they, they, um, they didn't want him to leave. So, I think you, you've got it is like a new signing, and I know a lot of people probably you can clip that one, Brady, because I'll get a lot of stick on Twitter for that. But um, yeah, bring it on. I, I think you've got a really a positive addition to the squad for the rest of the season there. Yeah, I mean the thing is as well. I think that's all about optics. Like if we if they'd have done the you know if we'd have signed the two lads and then done it, I don't think you get half as much flack. It's because we hadn't signed anyone at that point on it. But yeah, you, you're exactly right, Tom. That's, you know, I know we criticise Huddersfield a lot <laughs> on this podcast, like sometimes for loan players aren't where they go, but Spencer's the example. You hope that it's like, yeah, they go out and loan, they get their minutes and they can come back and make an impression. So I agree with you. They're, they're the three that stood out for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, anyway, chaps. Uh, Gab, how can Town hurt Plymouth then? What would you say their weaknesses are? 
I would say um, Plymouth Argyle are a very um, process driven side. They um, are very much in, in the school of playing out from the back. Um, and I would basically think uh, you want to try and catch them in the middle third. So part of part of my reasoning for thinking Jack Rodoni, um, Alex Matos and uh, David Kasumu would be, they're all very aggressive, tenacious midfielders. Yeah. Um, and especially with Rodoni, you've got that option of him breaking forward to join the front, well, make the front two become a front three. Um, and I, yeah, yeah, I, I kind of like that idea. And I think sort of being aggressive and uh, strong in transitions is probably, um, uh, is probably give you a good chance. Like it, like it. Um, well, lads, because we've got a mailbag question, so I think it's time to do our match predictions for this one. What are we all going for? Tom, what are you picking for this one? Um, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one because obviously they've got their terrible away record, but then they've still got the likes of Whitaker, um, Azaz and... Um, oh, no, Azaz is actually going to Middlesbrough. Yeah. Oh, is it? Right, when, yeah. when's that happening? Is that, is that happening? I think that's, I think that's happening. happening. I think been confirmed or not? Wow. But yeah, oh, I've well, that's to play. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Then that take that takes one of their players who have scored pretty much more goals than our top scorer um, out of the team. But I mean, that's that's the only thing I kind of worry about. They've got a, they've got like five players who have scored the same amount of goals as Michael Hellick. And when when I'm saying that our centre back is our top scorer, that's that also is very worrying. So. Look, I think they will potentially get a goal, um, but hopefully by that time, Town have already got two or three somehow, and maybe Radders Radders gets a goal and debut. So I, I'm going to go 2-1 win for Town just because they are struggling away from home, simply, really. I think I think it's too soon for the new guy to change those fortunes. Nice. Gab, what about yourself? I think Huddersfield might win, yeah. I'm going to go 2-1, 2 one, two ten. Lovely, lovely stuff. Um, I I was also going 2-1. I just think, Tom, you were talking about new manager bounce and the worry, but I just feel like he had enough time to work with um, work with the squad and they're in a bit of a, as the, as the coach say, in a bit of a bad moment potentially. So I think Town can catch her on this. And I'm going for big man Bergen to, to score as well. I just I like what I saw, Tom. You know, little flash if we can play to him, and you just think he's, he's a lad who can score headers. Saw with Thomas whipping them in, and just see it happening. Um, here's hoping anyway, we will see. But, chaps, before we go, um, we did get a mailbag question. Well, we've got a few, but we haven't got a lot of time, so I'm just going to pick this one for you, Gab. Um, it's from Mark Harrison. He says, uh, I think Gab has had us down as one of the three teams to be relegated. Um, what does he feel we need to change his mind? Oh, what a great question. Um, so I'm pretty confident that Huddersfield have, um, you've got enough in your squad to finish above um, Rotherham, who, despite some improvements under Liam Richardson, have given themselves a lot to do. And QPR, who I feel have reverted to type after a decent start under Marty Sifuentes. So that's two teams that I, yeah, I'm pretty confident that you're better than. Um, the big problem, I think, is the resurgence for she of Sheffield Wednesday and how highly I rate Danny Rowe, um, probably higher than Darren Moore. So I do think that Sheffield Wednesday will stay stay up, whether or not that's uh, at Huddersfield's expense, which then leads me to look at um, other teams. And this is why um, I think it's great that you seem to be having a good window and some of the promises are being delivered on. But as I mentioned at the beginning, um, Blues, we've just appointed Tony Mabry. Plymouth Argyle, I think, are a well-run club, although to move within a point of them while they're under a new management, I think, would be um, would be massive. Stoke, I think, in terms of the quality in their squad, I, I expect them to pull away there and beat an under Schumacher. Um, so, I'm, so we're really looking at... Um, a um, uh, finding a plummeter and um, the likes of Blackburn and Preston North End I think could plummet um, at the same time they're both um, 10 or more points 13 in Preston North End's mm. case um, above the relegation zone so effectively if we're saying that those sides need 50 points to stay up um, then Blackburn Rovers only need another 18 from their remaining 20 games um, 
and Preston North End only need another 15. Um, so it is difficult and I, and I am finding it hard to find other teams. So that's kind of um, one perspective. So um, I think Huddersfield need um, to really find a formula, hopefully find um, a more reliable source of goals because you can't expect Michael Hellick to head one in from a set piece every week. Um, so that's quite a big thing. I think you're going to need uh, Oladilovic to, um, to to make a real impact um, and uh, Matos to get Matos as well and probably another two or three additions uh, as well because I think you've got to have a really big January window to give yourself a chance. Um, but I am just put in that really difficult position of... Um, I, I, I find it hard to find that third team that Huddersfield are going to finish above. Um, so... You've got to uh, take matters into your own hands and improve your own form, but also probably need a little bit of fortune along the way. Mm, we'll see. I mean, obviously, Plymouth maybe the one I'm looking at, you know, and if we do mm. get a win, we're, we're just through, you know, a point behind them. Um, so, yeah, we will Black, see. Blackburn, Blackburn are on a bit of a, not even a bit of a downer. It's been, seems to be not going well for them. So, I don't, when you said them, I did think, because it, it's still very tight, isn't it, Gab? I think mm. it, like you said, though, I think like Stoke, Birmingham, and um, who else was I looking at then? Uh, like Swansea, uh, sorry, Chef Wednesday, uh, uh, looking mm. like they're kind of changing the form. So it, it's probably yeah. is going to be down to someone kind of messing up a lot or um yeah i mean what i'd say about us tom is that when we had john eustace in charge um we were actually sixth which suggests to me that the players are good enough um yeah. especially if we can have a good january window um and actually i think wayne really leaving and us bring in a pretty good championship manager in tony mabray who's done well at this level with uh with blackburn and, and sunderland um in recent years that does make me think uh, we'll probably will stabilize um again i, I find it really i think you're just hoping that either you can overtake plymouth argyle or there's this massive um sort of plummet from press north end or blackburn but um yeah. it's going to be tricky you've got to you've got to get, sort of keep, get your own house in order and then hope for you know something yeah. elsewhere to kind of favor you a little bit and unfortunately that's the position you're in Mm -hmm. We will see, but uh, yeah, never dull spot in Huddersfield Town, is it, Tom? No, <laughs> like, no, it's not. Um, but okay, chaps, we'll leave it there, I think. But um, Tom, thanks for coming on as always. Gab, thanks so much for joining us this week. Um, I, I'm sure the listeners already follow you, but if not, they can follow you at Gab Sutton. And we'll yeah, cheers. Um, yeah, lots of conversation starters on my account, uh, Gab Sutton. Thanks for mentioning that. And I've also got a show called um, EFL Debate. We've got uh, I've had you guys on a couple of times, um, sort of chat about the championship every Wednesday at 5 30, so you can check that out as well. So, yeah, fuck, drop me a follow at Gab Sutton and for the hashtag EFL debate, as you can see on your screen there. There you go, lovely stuff. And uh, Tom and I will be back to preview the next game, which is Blackburn, fully enough. Uh, so, we will leave you there, but let's hope for a win at the weekend. Uh, to Tarfan now and up the town.